Alright guys, welcome to the battlefield of Kane. Now, a couple things, uh, <laughs> we got some defenses here. Um, so, historically in this battle, the Romans fought in a, a fairly square formation, which is just not possible to make um, without putting a fort situation as the battlefield. So there's your uh, your your first mistake or first error. Uh, first thing I would change if I were to do this again. It's just, uh, I mean, if I could do this battle with a friends uh, playing against the Romans, I think it'd be a lot easier. But um, I I and I tried I tried really hard to get the AI or at least the Romans. Um, the Romans AI to behave the way I needed it to behave, and it just didn't work. Uh, so the Ford system is the only way I could get it to work. Second, no Roman cavalry, so pretty early on in the battle, and we're going to skip this section of the battle, uh, the Carthaginian Cavs ran off the Roman cavalry in the early stages of the fight. So many of the survivors of Cane uh, were actually Roman cavalry who had retreated pretty early in the battle. Uh, again, one of those things that under the conditions, uh, it just wasn't possible to make it really work that way. So we don't have uh, Roman cavalry in this battle either. And the third thing is, it's going to be really hard to uh, get behind the Romans as well. They've got these, like, rocks in front of the fort, so it's not going to let me come in from behind. But I think with that wall there, it's not like these guys can retreat anyway, so it, we'll still be able to, like, sort of fully surround the Romans here in this battle. Uh, here we go. And we're going to fast forward a little bit. Because it's a lot of walking around right now. Also, daily reminder to drink some water today. Alright. Here we go. We are getting our light infantry up first. We're going to try to skirmish down some of these Romans uh, hiding behind these walls. There. I guess they've just got extra shields lying around. I thought I had killed somebody already, but I guess not. Alright. Cool, 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 cool. So there's a couple, uh, if you've never heard of the Battle of Cannon, let me uh, give you a brief introduction. <clears throat> Hannibal uh, is the, the leader of this Carthaginian army, and he is marching uh, through Spain, France, and northern Italy to reach uh, a little bit south of Rome. He's in kind of like the southern portion of the central third of the Italian peninsula. If you can kind of picture that in your head. In fact, I think he's maybe just north of Naples, I want to say. Modern day Naples. I think at the time it was called Neapolis. Uh, regardless, he is trying to attack the city of Rome from the south uh, because it's a little bit less defended down there. Uh, so the Romans send an army to intercept a massive army of uh, over 80,000 troops. And Carthage is only coming into the fight with about 5,000. So he's almost twice outnumbered here. So here's Hannibal's plan. He's going to dismount from his horses and fight on foot. And here we go, he got his bodyguards here. Behind uh, his center. So he's using infantry to form a center. Uh, pretty basic formation. And meets the Romans 
uh, I believe, on the north side of a river. Uh, and he approaches the Roman camp from the east. Romans come out of the camp to meet him, but they're kind of uh, limited in uh, how they can stretch their forces out because, uh, and we've talked about this before, the Roman infantry arrange themselves in a three-tier system uh, based on their heavy infantry. It's called the manacle system. So even though they outnumber the Carthaginians, they kind of have to, like, form themselves in three lines. So, you know, you can almost imagine uh, about 90,000 troops in three lines. Well, that's only lines of about 30,000. So Hannibal's idea is if I can just outnumber the front line, that's all we need because my troops will hold. And it's really only like having to fight the Romans one-third of an army at a time. Like, three rounds of less than 30,000 troops. And I have 50,000. We can do this. So, early in the battle, he has his cavalry drive off the Roman flank, uh, flanks uh, guarded by the Roman cavalry and is able to use his cavalry to e squeeze the Roman flanks even more to really push them into this square formation. His cavalry constantly harassing the Roman flanks. And what that allows is for his best troops, his Libyan spearmen, to form around those flanks. And as he picks off the lower quality frontline troops of the Roman Republic, his frontline pushes forward, Roman troops continue to push forward as well, and slowly over the course of the battle between those flanking Carthaginian infantry and cavalry, he's able to fully surround the Roman army, even though it outnumbers him. Now during the battle, Carthage would sustain intensely heavy casualties. As you can imagine, surrounding an enemy who knows they have no escape from battle except death, will fight to the death. Uh, and the outnumbered Carthaginians really could not afford to employ a strategy like that. So they take heavy casualties, they win the battle, but they take so many losses that Hannibal is not able to make his attack on Rome. And the war is extended by several more years. It actually even eventually ends in defeat for Carthage. <clears throat> so it's one of those examples of uh, a defeat in battle can mean a win for the war. Uh, that's the case for Rome, or in case of uh, Carthage, a victory in battle can be defeat in war. And uh, this analogy is not new either. Rome saw this exact same thing happen during the Pyrrhic Wars, in which Epirus, modern-day Albania, at least mostly, invaded southern uh, Italy and uh, made several victorious battles against the Romans, but sustained such heavy losses in each battle that they were unable to do anything with the victories they achieved. Uh, and unfortunately, that was the curse for the Carthaginians in this war as well. Uh, they could get victory, but they could not do anything with the victories that they gained. Or at least uh, with cannon. So what we're doing right now is I'm trying to just throw some torches to break open several holes in this wall. Again, not historic. Because there wouldn't have been a wall here, uh, but it's just going to allow me to get my troops into this fort.
And I believe we're on a scale of, <clears throat> I want to say maybe like 17 to 1. It might be 15. So each soldier you see here represents uh, somewhere between like 15 to 20 uh, to 1. Again, just kind of throwing some torches, busting some holes open in these defenses. Uh, now, what my plan is to do with the cavalry. Now, when the Carthaginian cavalry finally engaged the, Carthag or the Roman infantry, they had dismounted. So, what we're going to do is um, we're going to get these guys off their horses, I think. Are we doing that now? No, these guys are just chilling. Uh, we're going to get them off their horses, and my plan is to send them through this section and this section, basically the back half of these flanks, and get them to form a wall like this. So we'll still surround the enemy of the tree. And I might even fast forward a little bit more, because we're really just kind of throwing torches right now. Not a lot of super exciting uh, fighting happening. Okay, here we go. So it looks like the Romans are finally pushing some infantry out. Looks like some Triarii to try to uh, deal with this. I'm tired of just uh, barbecue and just kebabs out there. Uh, I think they want to get the battle going. By the way, who doesn't love a good uh, roasted lamb on a stick? A little shish kebab action. Maybe chicken kebabs. But well, we are punching a lot of holes in those walls. Our cavalry, I think, are... Are you guys getting off your horses yet? Not yet. Well, we've got our Dominions. Also, in order to make this... Finally get a historical result out of this, I had to really up the XP of these soldiers. I did this battle so many times that I it took me, actually, I think, three days. Because I did it, like, three times one day and then gave up. Three times the next day, gave up. And then finally, on the third day... I was just like, okay, we're going to do this one more time and just make my soldiers, like, crazy high XP. And that was the only time I could get, like, an actual win for a Carthage. Here we go, uh, Hastati. Is it Hastati coming out? Yes. Cool. Again, it was just because it was hard to get the AI to do what I needed it to do. Unfortunately, that's just how it goes sometimes. Oh, and uh, by the way, I'm going to make the announcement. Uh, one, I've got my vaccine for uh, COVID, so if you have not gotten your vaccine yet, uh, check your local uh, local resources out, figure out when you can get it. Then you should definitely get vaccinated, folks. Uh, but what that means is uh, I can travel again. So those of you who know me personally probably know that my main research in anthropology is actually researching women's sports. Um, I... I'd grown up, I just, like, had fun with these video games, and I would just try to reenact historical battles with them, and figured during COVID, may as well, uh, do something fun, you know, try to build a fan base, which is kind of how this channel started. If you're new to this channel, videos like this is what I started, um, doing when I started making videos for it, and then just kind of branched out from there, but, uh... I'm behind on like four different research trips because of COVID now. Uh, so I'm going to get to traveling. But uh, what that means relative to our battle here 
is uh, I'm actually going to be heading over to Europe. Uh, Ireland, Italy, Spain, Greece even. So I, I, I've got this really cool outdoor uh, sound recording device. Uh, it's basically a microphone that has like the windshield on it. Anyone who knows anything about uh, audio recording, uh, having to do interviews, journalism, whatever, knows exactly what I'm talking about. Basically, if you have a microphone, like if you ever, if you've ever tried to like film anything that includes audio outside, even the littlest amount of winds can just destroy whatever audio you're trying to record. Uh, but they make these like fluffy little like basically like fur balls that you put on top of a microphone, and what it does is it catches the the winds. It filters it so that it can't affect the noise recording microphone. Well, I've got one that is a rain a microphone that's like a it's like a wireless mic system. So it's gonna allow me to record something on my iPad from like something like three hundred yards away. Uh, and it includes the the noise filter that uh, fluffy thing. So, I'm going to be making some sick videos for you guys when I get it over to Italy. I'm going to be going to Rome, um, so expect some cool videos uh, later this summer. It might take me a while to edit them, so it, it might not be available to watch on here until the fall, you know, maybe September, October. But uh, come August, I'm going to do this trip. Uh, right now, I'm planning for, I think, three or four weeks in Europe. And I'm going to try to get some cool stuff. Uh, now, I'm mostly going to be there working on my main research work. Um, so, it'll also be a couple books coming out. But, uh, something to keep an eye on uh, for the there is a YouTube channel for some cool videos. Um, I'll, I, I'm going to try really hard to get out to Marathon so I can do a little video for you guys on the Battle of Marathon. And um, in the city of Rome, we'll, I'll find some stuff to make cool videos on. The whole city full of historical sites. Uh, but other than that, uh, here's the places I'm going. Um, Ireland, Spain, France, Italy, Greece. Uh, as of right now, the UK, I don't think, is allowing U.S. travelers yet. So Wales is on my list of places I need to go. But if I can't get there, I just have to accept that. But if for some reason I am able to get to Wales, I'm going to get over there. Um, so I don't have a lot of time to just go really far off. Like, it, But feel free to tell me in the comments below where you'd like to go have me go to make some cool videos like I think I might have time to go up to like Genoa if you've never been to Genoa Italy it's a super cool city um, so there's some cool videos I can make there but uh, so just post in the comments like if there's something you know like a cool like park in um, maybe Dublin or you because I do a series on the history of beer maybe you want me to like make a video to the Guinness Brewery uh, let me know because I'll be in Dublin Paris so a video on the Paris catacombs could be super cool um, Madrid and Burgos in Spain Rome in Italy, and then Athens and Olympia in Greece. So I'm definitely going to make some at least one video on the ancient Greek Olympics while I'm in Olympia. Uh, but yeah, let me know in the comments below. Like, if there's any cool historical or cultural things that you'd love to see me make videos of, let me know and I'll try to make it happen. And like I said, it's probably going to take me a lot of time to edit some of those videos, but... Uh, let me know, and I'll try to try to make it happen, because I'm planning on having a couple, at least a little bit of free time in each city, uh, so that I can make cool videos like that. 
But let me know if there's places you think I should go. I know there's been some talk of renovating the Coliseum in Rome. Um, I think what they're doing is planning on... So if you've never... If you don't know much about the Coliseum in Rome, uh, I mean, I'm sure you know what it looks like. Uh, but it was basically like the stadium where they had gladiatory games. But it was had some impressive engineering. Uh, they had these like elevators, like ancient elevators, uh, hooked up to the floor so they could like... I mean, it was a real, like, WWE-style spectacle here. Like, elevate athletes from underground. And even, like, you know, like, lions and stuff, like wild animals from under the stadium up. And they'd even have, like, naval battles. Like, they could fill this thing with water and have boats floating inside of it and fighting each other. But, uh, you know, like, these elevators that bring athletes up. So, I don't know if it's, like, the parks department or what, like, how it works, but... They, and I don't know who they is, but they are renovating the floor system for the Coliseum to put those elevators back into it so people who visit the Coliseum can, like, see how it works. Uh, I don't know when it's going to be completed, but, man, it would be an awesome thing to, to make a YouTube video about. How about that? <laughs> But it does look like we are starting to push in on the flanks. We've got troops coming in over here. I think we've got our dismounted cavalry finally getting over here. Got some uh, dismounted Gaelic cavalry, Iberian cav. Looks like mostly uh, Iberian and, and Celtic. They're going to get up there, punch some holes. Now over here are Numidian, a dismounted Numidian cavalry. I think they'll provide some nice light infantry support uh, by throwing some javelins into this group of Romans here. Looks like the general's bodyguard for Rome is still here in the battle, but Legatus trying to punch their way out, though, they have been trying to buy themselves a uh, escape route for this battle. But intense fight here. Looks like maybe so. Is that Velotes? Some Roman light infantry are throwing some javelins in the fight up here in support of their troops trying to hold back my flanking force. Now you can see the Romans are doing a good job of holding me back. But it's taking a lot of resources to do that. So you can see their reserves are just running around trying to figure out where to provide support to. guy with the wolf head. It's so cool. Fortunately, no wolves were hard to make it this video again. We've got some mercenary Italian troops. And I think we may have a good avenue to 
finally push into this place. Looks like we are finally, you know, I would say finally breaking the Romans, but I don't think so, because they have a good, they've got this good little, like, press it right here. And then up here, they've got a good front against my troops, and I do have some javelin men providing support. But the Romans, as of right now, I mean, you can see the balance of power. They they hold the, um, they kind of hold the priority here. Over here, there's a lot of Velites fighting, so it looks like they're desperate to hold this position. They have some Triarii, but it's really a reserve force on this flank trying to hold me back. Because it's mostly the light infantry. So I think the bulk of their forces <clears throat> are at their center trying to hold me back right here. And they're doing a decent job at it. Uh, but I really desperately need to make a break for all these flanks so that I can get behind the stronger Roman troops. <laughs> I just took a javelin to the face. Oh my god. Oh. Imagine seeing that, like you're just watching your buddy, Antonius, you know, you just see the, the head of a spear come through the back of his head, and then he just turns around and it's just like a, the shaft of a spear coming out of his eye socket. Oh my god. Oh. Brutal. Now we are starting to move in our light infantry because I I'm taking way too long to break through the flanks here. So I need more troops in my center. Unfortunately, all that I have is my light infantry. I'm just trying to overwhelm. I think this is just, they, Rome is very committed to not dying. Which I don't understand. Why, 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 why. But uh, they're going to try. They're going to try to hold on. And it's just making it difficult for me to punch through. We are finally getting some holes in these walls over here, our cavalry. They're just an intense fight. You can see it from the, the point of view of these carrion birds. I think our javelin cav are running out of javelins. So we may need to send them in here pretty soon. Now this could be a good position to attack though, because they have their kind of left side exposed.
This is a very good angle for you guys. By the way, uh, speaking of mercenaries, soldiers of fortune, as they're called, troops that are hired by the nation's government to fight for them in battle, uh, as the bulk of Carthage's land forces, their army, uh, were made up of mercenary soldiers. I just want to say that my loyalty can always be bought. Uh, so if you are a small business or a big business, and you're interested in uh, helping these videos become, you know, become existence, you know, we help make these videos possible. Uh, <laughs> uh, feel free to hit up my email. Uh, I do actually really like supporting small businesses, uh, but uh, you can actually go to my website. I have kind of like my going rate for advertisements, uh, including mentioning products in my videos. Um, and I do a wide range of videos, so maybe you're like a, a microbrewery and you want me to give you a shout out in one of my history of beer videos or... You know, maybe, um, I don't know, maybe, like, your company makes toy soldiers, so we'll be to mention it in one of these, these battle videos. Uh, let me know. And, uh, I have, I have no problem with, uh, you know, adding a, a quick shout-out to potential, uh, Sponsors for videos. Maybe you run a museum, you know, like a, a Greek museum, or maybe a you know, like a Native American museum. You know, like, throw me, throw me some dollars to mention uh, your historical museum. In one of these videos, I'm always down for doing that. It does look like our cavalry are making uh, making their way into the battle here. We're trying to like disable the Roman towers because they're giving me a lot of uh, flack out there. It looks like the Romans are throwing their last reserves into the fight. They're desperate. Ooh, we're getting a really good angle with these javelin men. Getting really good hits in. All of these guys are are dead because of javelins. Here we go, we're getting some of our, uh, our cavalry into the fight over here, looks like we're charging in, help out with this flank over here.
The Romans are a tough cookie to crumble. The ginger snaps of cookies out there. <laughs> They're putting up a fight. These are no uh, chewy chocolate chip cookies out there. These Romans are going to fight to the death. And you know, and that's exactly kind of what the problem was. Is, uh, Carthage just like... They really... And this is where... Uh, what do you history nerds geek out over? Oh, but the, but the crescent. Uh, the, the push of your glasses. I just, just did that. You guys can't see it, obviously. Cause you can't see my face. A be beautiful marble sculpted Adonis in a face. Uh, <laughs> all you nerds out there. Uh, talking about this battle. Uh, talking about the crescent. I was going to feel familiar, like, basically, when Carthage, like, moved forward into battle, they moved in, like, a convex shape, you know, like, in a, like, a, like a crescent, like a crescent moon towards the enemy. Uh, there's some historical debate over whether that was intentional or not. But what had happened was once the Carthaginians met the Romans, that convex shape turned into a concave shape, and that's what led to the Carthaginians surrounding the Romans. Well, there's a, like I said, there's some debates over whether that was intentional. It may have been by sheer accident that the Carthaginians managed to surround, at least completely surround, the Romans. It was probably intentional to flank them with a double envelopment, which means um, when you attack the front and both sides of your enemy, a single envelopment is front and one side, double envelopment, front and two sides. Uh, and then a total envelopment is surrounding your opponent completely. Um, that may have been by accident. Um, obviously there's going to be some debate about that, so I won't say that it was by accident, but there is some, uh, pretty compelling arguments to suggest that it was by accident, that it became a total envelopment, and like I said, the problem with that was there was still so many Romans alive and fighting that they fought desperately to the death and caused heavy casualties in the Carthaginian army, there probably would have been far less casualties had the uh, Carthaginians not fully enveloped their enemy. Uh, and ancient historians kind of understood that, which is why I think the total envelopment may have been a like an accident. You know, like something that was not intentional. Because you read like the writings of Sun Tzu, and I know this is over in China, but like, it's not like China knew anything about war tactics that Europeans did not know. Um... Sun Tzu says that, like, basically, in battle, you should never fully surround your enemy because if you give them an escape route, they will always prefer to run away than fight. I mean, it's like wild animals. If you corner a wild animal, it will fight. But if the wild animal knows there is a path towards running away, then it will almost always choose to run instead of fight you. So you give your enemy a path to retreat, and you let them retreat, and then you just run them down. You just run over them. Like with cavalry, you just charge them down. You just run them over them. And most battles, the vast majorities, majority of casualties are people trying to run away who get run down. 
And I think Hannibal knew that. So, and that's why I kind of think that um, the argument that the total development was an accident, I think that is correct. Uh, but it does look like the bulk of the Roman flanks are breaking. We see a lot of routing velites, which are the lighter infantry. We're moving troops in uh, from many angles of uh, Roman back lines to go for their center now. But like I said, a lot of these reserves are in retreat. We even have routing Triari. Still a desperate fight over here, though. As the Roman center continues to fight pretty, honestly, pretty strong. Pretty strongly? Fight strongly? I don't feel like strongly is not a word. Fights valiantly. Here we go. Still valiantly fight. Um, now, Carthage's center is the one that probably took most of the damage because they had the, the most difficult battle to fight. Because um, they really had to hold their ground against Rome's best troops a long time in order to finally get uh, the flanks of the Carthaginian force, that Libyan infantry and the cavalry, to finally join in on the fighting. And I think that's why Hannibal fought from the front lines, because he knew he would need to constantly provide encouragement to the front line troops to make sure his center held. You can see we are, we overwhelmed the Roman right flank, and we're sending a lot of troops in to attack uh, the back of the Roman center. Looks like we're running over figs and dates out there. No fig noobs from this uh, army camp. <laughs> Which is a shame, because figs, dates, all delicious. Probably some apricots out there. Some pears. Recently saw a video that uh, talked about how apparently pears were considered a delicacy in uh, ancient world. Like the ancient Romans loved, loved their pears. Romans fighting desperately at their center. Meanwhile, the flank over here, these guys are actually still doing pretty well. In fact, they were able to cut open just a little bit of an escape route. Some of their troops are able to escape. It looks like a massive break for the Roman center. 
A lot of Romans beginning to vow back here. Massive Roman route. Because even the generals turned to GTFO. And we are shifting a lot of those troops now over here. Is the this half of the Roman center is still holding on fiercely. But yeah, you can see this is a huge break. Finally, be starting to make a breakthrough over here. Looks like some of the lighter Roman troops are retreating. The heavier troops are still fighting them. As we rummage through the ruins of this uh, Roman camp here. Looks like a huge break over here. As you, you're just trying to contain this league. A lot of Roman troops trying to retreat through this little avenue. And our soldiers are doing their best to just like not get run over. There are some principes continuing to fight, but a lot of Roman troops just uh, doing their best to just get the heck out of there. When we take a look, this may be the surrounding of the battle here. A little bit of a smaller ring, but we've got the Romans encircled now. I think we've got a little bit of an escape route right here, but otherwise, we're finally making a breakthrough. A lot of Romans are breaking. Go figure. But the Triari are continuing to fight them. As well as some of their Hastati brothers. It's 
So Prince of Bay still fighting as well. Now, if I recall correctly, uh, the Romans actually tried to surrender when they were surrounded, but there was so many of them that Hannibal knew, like, they could just, like, if he had allowed them to surrender, they could just kill all the Carthaginians while they slept, you know, even though they were pris captured as prisoners. Like, he could not afford to hold on to that many prisoners. So he ordered the Carthaginians to just keep killing these guys. And it was really like, I mean, it was, it was sort of like an eight hour long battle after the Carthaginians surrounded the Romans, let alone what it took to, the amount of time it took to get his troops uh, surrounding the Romans. He was just hacking away at these guys. Well, Roman troops trying to just escape the battlefield here. Okay, we've got some Romans over here. In this corner, just a lot of Roman troops trying to retreat, getting caught. Looks like some of the Romans maybe even going for a bold return. Is that what I'm seeing? Sure. Well, maybe there's this horse is rubbing around.
It looks like the balance of power is finally turning in favor of Carthage here. There's just a massive number of casualties from really both sides here, but turns against the Romans. We have still have a unit of Principe fighting, trying to buy their companions time to get the heck out of here. There we go, that unit breaks. And we do have some Valentines, interesting. Yep, some Roman troops, Trinic maybe even come back to the fight. So when there's a uh, Roman cavalry, it's like their general still needing one last desperate attempt to uh, maybe salvage those figs. Oh, a little jump shot there. Got a few Roman troops trying to come back to the fight. But I think this battle is over, and I think they know that. Look at this battlefield, the carnage.
There we go. They're finally breaking. Once again. Oh. The guy just took a sword to the back of his neck. Like a slaughtered cow. And this guy on his knees. <laughs> oh. And I think that's going to be it. Oh my god, look at this carnage. You can see the spots too where like Roman troops were retreating because there's no Carthaginian dead or almost none. And I think that's going to do it for the battle, guys. We look on uh, the carnage. Get a good little shot there. Oh, yeah. And, guys, we're going to end it there. And I'll see you on a future battlefield.